It's actually a very small part of our atmosphere. Well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you asking specifically? Uh, well, you said we need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. I'd like to know first if you know what it is. The Democrats always use younger people as their mouthpieces, whether it's Greta Thunberg or Harry Sisson or people like that. But that's basically stayed relegated to the world of influencers and that sort of thing. This is different. You were, uh, who invited you here today? I came with Protect Our Winters. Right. Um, but you're here on behalf of the Democrats or the Republicans? I'm here on behalf of the outdoor enthusiasts around America. Okay. <laughs> you were contacted by the Senator Democrats. White House's staff? I personally uh, came with Protect Our Winters, so I don't okay. know how that went okay. exactly. Um, what, is, what is carbon dioxide? <laughs> Seems like a pretty straightforward question you should ask at a hearing on the budget and climate change. <laughs> I'm, I went to high school, but that's uh, carbon dioxide is a, a gas. Okay. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a professional to talk about carbon dioxide so much, but... Well, you, you want us to abolish it, right? No, I, <laughs> there's always going to be carbon dioxide. Right. So, so what is it you want us to do? I now, let, me, let me back up because I, I want to. I mean, you're here as an expert. Tell me more about what carbon dioxide is. I'm here as an expert cross country skier who sees the changes in my winters and the landscape that I live in in Alaska, and so carbon dioxide is. What I see it as is, you know, it's a gas that exists in our atmosphere. And what, is it the major part of our atmosphere? Or? It's a huge part of our atmosphere, yeah. Carbon dioxide is a very small part of the atmosphere. Air is mostly nitrogen. It's actually a very small part of our atmosphere. Well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you asking specifically? Uh, well, you said we need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. I'd like to know first if you know what it is. You want us to abolish fossil fuels? I never said that. You never have said that? No. Okay. What, what do you think we ought to do with fossil fuels? What will we do with fossil fuels? Yeah. Should we make any changes? I would like to see a decrease in the use of fossil fuels. I think there's a possibility to use more electric generation. Okay. Over, uh, over what period of time? 10 years, 50 years, 100 years? That's not... I would like to see it come as fast as possible while continuing. How fast? On. Sorry? How f this kid is so out of his depths here. This is sad. I mean, shame on the Democrats for bringing this dude forth as an expert to talk about this topic. Just because you're a skier and you have noticed maybe less snow, you're going to parade him out in front of the Senate and make him testify? Fast. I'm not, I don't have a you don't know for that, no. Okay, you just think, well, uh, how, how much will it cost for us to uh, become carbon neutral in the United States by 2050? I'm not a professional on that. I don't have an answer. You don't have any idea? No. You, you just think we ought to spend the money? I'm not an economist. Yeah, but it's going to cost money. You realize that. Yeah, but we've also talked about the, the trade-off of what the cost of climate change as emergencies will cost in the future also. So right. Something that I find stunning about Democrats, and I noticed this even back when I would consider myself on the left when I was in grad school out in California and sort of surrounded by this, is in the face of their glaring ignorance, which John Kennedy is pointing out here systematically with his questioning, they still manage to maintain an air of condescension right this this kid clearly has an attitude about it and despite having to proclaim that he has zero knowledge on any of the questions john kennedy is asking he still rebuts with an almost like yeah dummy type of condescension which i've always found to be like a breathtaking aspect of democrats and i'll admit as someone who sort of uh, put academia on a pedestal in my youth it was something that appealed to me about them, and now it completely repulses me, and I just cringe every time I watch an exchange like this, because Gus Schumacher here clearly thinks that he is better, smarter, more righteous 
than the gentleman who's questioning him, who has a lifetime of knowledge and is far more of an expert on this particular topic than the cross-country skier kit. But it's going to cost trillions of dollars to become carbon neutral by 2050, right? 2050. I do not know. You don't know. You just think we ought to do it. I... Yeah, bro. I don't have a great answer for you, but I think okay. I would. Like if to we see spent if we spent those trillions of dollars and became carbon neutral by 2050 in the United States, um, which you advocate, how much will it reduce world temperatures? I don't know, bro. I don't have an answer for that. You don't know? No. Here's an answer for you: uh, very minimally, because the United States is a drop in the bucket compared to India and China. I think we ought to spend the money and then see what happens. <laughs> I think as an athlete, I think if we spend that money and invest in our future, hopefully those temperatures stop rising and maybe the snow at least stabilizes where it is for me. But yeah. Bro, let's take like hardworking taxpayers' dollars and like put all of it towards this thing that a lot of Americans don't support because Bruh, I might have some gnarly powder that I can shred in the backcountry, bruh. I don't think anyone knows for sure. I don't know anyway. Well, when, well when, that's true. When, you don't. When my colleagues invite witnesses to come to us to tell us, uh, advise us on passing legislation, I always check out the background of our witnesses because I like to know who I'm talking to. Uh oh. Um, I'm, I, I checked yours out, Mr. Schumacher, um, and I want to be sure I understand it as I evaluate your testimony. Uh, on June 8, 2020, you tweeted, I'm going to quote, the war on drugs was intentionally created to incarcerate black people en masse, end quote. So to make that statement, you have to believe that black people are more likely to use drugs. Soft bigotry of low expectations, racism, right? War on drugs, you said, was intentionally created to incarcerate black people en masse. Who, who intentionally created the war on drugs to put black people in jail? Who were you talking about? I don't remember talking about. The white man. That. You don't? No. It's on your Twitter feed. Maybe a retweet. I don't know. I haven't used that in a while. Well, also, even it if it's a retweet, like it's... it shows your support. Right? Maybe. Yeah, I... But it's not the topic of this conversation. I right, think. right. But it has to do with you're here giving us advice, and I just kind of like to know a little bit more about you. Yeah, I'm. You. I mean, I'm here as an athlete, giving you my story and what okay. I've seen in my. On, field. on August 27th of 2020, you tweeted this quote. I'm going to quote: "Police are paid with taxpayer dollars." If they are not answerable to us, we can demand new service, and that's what this is. Abolish the police in favor of that new service, end quote. Well, look, I do agree partially with that. The police do work for us at the will of the people paid by our, our tax dollars. Now, the second part is asinine. Uh, I think the solution is put more money towards better training for police. But I, I do uh, credit where credit is due. That first part, I think most people... Who, who are educated on the matter know, yeah, our tax dollars fund the police, and uh, they're supposed to serve and protect the people. That's, that's why they exist. You think we ought to abolish the police, do you? Again, not the topic I'm here to talk about today. I know, but, but you tweeted it. You see you what I mean? That, that condescension that he has? Again, not the topic I'm here to discuss today, brah. Abolish the police? That's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> Should we do that before or after we get rid of fossil fuels? I'm not going to address that. That's yeah. Oh, I'm address boy. It. Okay. Uh, let me ask you about one more of your tweets. On August 26, 2020, you tweeted, there's a picture. I'm not going to describe the picture, but you said, quote, your words, not mine. It's on your Twitter feed. Th quote, this is what systemic racism looks like. The Los Angeles Police Department is literally policing only the Black Lives Matter side, end quote. Well, we know that's not true. What do you mean by that? This is still off topic. 
No, it's not. You're here as an expert telling us, <laughs> advising us, and I'm asking you about your, your, your background. I'm here as an athlete to talk about the effects of climate change on my sport. Okay, let's go back. Well, I'm almost out of time. Uh, you're well out of time. And All right, that's enough. So I just, I had to show you guys this clip, and I know people are probably going to comment, you interrupted too much, Dave. You, you should just let the clip play. Well, this is a reaction video, so part of this is giving my commentary. All right, guys? So if you don't like that, that's why I always put the clip, the link to the original clip in the description so you can watch it without me pescally interrupt, interrupting. But the point of this is to give my perspective and to show you guys things that I think are important. And this, I'll be fully transparent and fully honest as I've been in this entire clip. This reminded me so much of myself when I was a young, dumb idiot living in California, thinking that I was smarter than everyone else and uh, buying into this stuff. Now, this, I think, is bad on many levels, right? First off, you know, I, I don't want to attack this, this guy too much because, again, I think that there, there is hope for people like this, and I think he's young, and I think he's jaded, and I think he's going to mature and grow and hopefully learn more about the world and see things for what they are. Uh, but more uh, sinister is the fact that this is the type of person that Democrats will call as their expert witness in a hearing on the budget for climate change. Think about that. Of all the people out there, Bjorn Lomberg, uh, Michael Schellenberger, there are so many voices who have done extensive research in these areas, right, who know so much about this topic. They're going to call a 24-year-old kid who's a cross-country skier, who only has a high school education, which no knock as far as that goes, but it's a fact, uh, hasn't studied climatology, anything like that, which again, I know plenty of people who have studied climatology who... <laughs> Let's just say that that doesn't mean much either often. And uh, I got a lot of funding from the IPCC to do my doctoral research uh, on climate change. And I didn't know anything about anything. And they gave me a ton of money to do it. So take that with a grain of salt. But nonetheless, this is the type of expert witness, quotes, expert witness, the Democrats will call to the stand to testify to the Senate that we need to spend trillions of dollars on mitigating climate change over the next couple decades. A kid who skis. So let me know what you guys think. I just, I had to showcase this because it summarizes so many things that <laughs> we see in society today, right? Like the, the uh, primary mouthpiece in support of the climate change agenda is uh, 16. Uh, she was 16 when she started. She's 18 or 19 now, 20. I don't know. Greta Thunberg. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. They parade out these young people, these children, these people who really are so out of their depths and use them as their mouthpieces. And I think that it's wrong. I think that it's a silly tactic. And I think that people see right through it. And this is a perfect example. I mean, if you watch that testimony and you think that that kid actually should be there talking to the Senate about the legitimacy of spending trillions in taxpayer dollars at mitigation efforts towards climate change over the next couple of decades, then please let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear your reasoning. All right. It, at best, it's an anecdotal account of, man, I see less snow, bruh, when we could have actual industry experts who talk about real data and economists who talk about the feasibility, like where is this money coming from, right? What do we put it towards? What will be the return on investment? None of that stuff. Just here's a kid who skis and he's noticed less snow in the winter. But that's, that's the Democrat approach in modern America, appeal to emotion, appeal to emotion, appeal to emotion, qualitative, not quantitative. So let me know what you think. Love you guys. As always, I appreciate you. And please subscribe to the channel. It means the world. Bye.